It will be maybe less about chemistry and material science, more about psychology, but let's start with this. Of course, you can see this means in Japanese Roman, no vac. <laughs> and uh, uh, in translation, it is very romantic and wild vac. Vac is an animal which eat dreams. So it, it, uh, it suits very well. And everything started from Nordic Heisotron Laboratory. In 2005, uh, president of uh, TECOCO and also dean of material science decided that it is interesting to have Nordic Heisotron Laboratory. I was doing research in Japan for a long time in different fields, but I was also doing nano indentation. It was quite new technique. What is nano indentation? You, you take needle, very sharp needle, and you try to test everything around, yes, with this needle. So, and Heisotron is a leading company in Minnesota, Minneapolis, uh, which is producing and we bought the first in Scandinavian countries this kind of equipment. It is in it's a clean room. And uh, we decided to create American laboratory uh, run in Japanese style because I came to Japan and I was previously a Japanese professor. And it should be inside Finnish University. And soon it became 11 MA because it was a very small group. Uh, but why it was level one? Because it was amazing evolution and dynamics of this. Because you see, we have been founded in 2005, and people were totally uninitiated without any very high record. But 2006, we published all this physical review B, 2007, physical review letters, 2009, nature nanotechnology, and 2011, nature nanotechnology. So, Unfortunately, I cannot be so general, so I will be a little bit egoistic because we have only two great discoveries and I will concentrate on it, which should picture our, uh, our, our philosophy. And so this is this, uh, this nano indenter. What is this? This is, so this is a needle and everything started with so-called hardness test. Many many years ago, when the ships have been built from the big pieces of metal. So it was necessary to know where we have pertinent, info pertinent information about strength of this material, so-called yield strength. If you put into tension some, any structure, yes, if you put into tension or any stress, it will deform, of course, but deformation can be elastic, so it doesn't matter. But if it is plastic deformation, you will have mismatch between these, these sheets which, which are, uh, which, uh, the, this, which compose the, the, the sheep. And you will be have leaking, sheep will draw or break or something like this. So you need to know how long the material behaves elastically. And usually you pull the specimen into tension. But this was very expensive. So it was very easy to do it a different way. You take some ball or pyramid, you push like this, and it goes. If it goes deep, it is soft. If it goes shallow, it is hard. It was hardness. Of course, Germans, these are very practical, they developed this, and it was very cheap. But with, with na nanotechnology, which w w has been developing, so you need to know the mechanical properties of very tiny components, yes? So how to get it? Because even on the level of nanotechnology, you must know whether it breaks or not. For instance, if laser, if you have some semiconductor and you want to build laser, but if you have small cracks, it will be, you will never get laser of some defects. 
So it is, it is very important to know mechanical properties at this level. And Heizoton developed such a, uh, such a machine based on some transducer which had been developed originally for NASA. So we bought it, and it is going like this. That you have the needle, very sharp, approximately 30 nanometers in radius, and you push onto surface of, of some, some structure. So you have here nano contact. If it is completely elastic behavior, so it is, it is developing like this. Yes, it is loading and unloading. Here is depth of indentation, and here. And here is load. And because of electronics development, you can very precisely measure this load in micronewtons and also in nanometers, this, this indentation depth. So usually the response is like this, yes, that it is some elastic plastic behavior. So it is analogy between this. Here you have impetus, stress, and strain is reaction. Here you have also impetus, this indentation load, and reaction is indentation depth, how deep we are going. And usually at, you, can, you can test such as structures like these materials which are coming from Japan, which we tested. But, and usually everybody are doing, doing this kind of experiment for testing. But we are doing different. You can see here that our nano indentation experiments are somewhere here in the length scale. And usually people would like to extend it with using AFM, STM, TEM. We are not doing it. We are extending using atomistic simulation. So sometimes our group, and here is the psychology, is called uh, hunters of curiosity. So we are hunting curiosity. We are a small group, and we thought, uh, okay, uh, how, to, how to have our discoveries when well-founded, very big groups are struggling. So we decided to find which is missing in the, in the big developments in nanotechnology. So we are doing this nanostimulus, and we try by atom stimulus to explain this. And everything started, this nano indentation in 1997, with this paper in Physical Review B, became physics for the first time. And Professor Gerberich from Minnesota, he has observed very strange behavior. And the behavior is like this, you see? Usually, as you can see it to the right, the indentation is going like this, yes? I add, 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 load, and smoothly I go down and I unload. But he found something different, that there are some steps in this motion. So it is going like this. Smoothly, you, smoothly, you, smoothly. S and it is called pop in, pop in. And it was hypothesis that it is generation of first defect in this crystal structure. So this changes very much the concept. And indeed, it, the concept of nanoscale deformation. Why? Because we know that to acquire any change, to deform material, we have these dislocations, which are carriers of plasticity. Like electron and holes are carriers of electricity. And you must have them, and they are moving, and then you have deformation. But here, for the first time, people understood that we have lack of this dislocation, this carriers, because the contact is so small, it is nano contact, that I must crea create, of course, in this crystal, in this crystal, this big crystal, there's many of these carriers, many of these defects, dislocation. But in this small contact, 
we have no careers of deformation. So we have to we have to create these dislocations. And indeed, molecular dynamics, nature, 2002, just proved that it is true that, that really under this contact, the first dislocations in aluminum appear. So is it hot topic? Many natures appeared about something like this. And we have had here in Finland very interesting idea with my, my Japanese colleagues that let's make laser Let's make laser by me mechanical means. How to do it? Oh, very easy. If it is so that I can create the first dislocation, so let's make pattern of this indentation. So I have pattern. Oh, oh, oh. I have pattern. And then I will use molecular beam epitaxy. And molecular beam epitaxy makes me that atoms are moving to this higher energy spot, which is dislocation. But we tried it many times, so I can create quantum dot in a desired position. So if these quantum dots will be of sufficient density, I will get laser. But we never could get any quantum dot. And then we moved to very basic, basic research. We thought, OK, so we don't know why it is, it is going on. So let's take gallium arsenide and let's make basic research. So let's make this indentation. But if you approach new subject, it is usually that somebody already has done it. Uh, indeed, Leibner here in 2003 already published gallium arsenide indentation, yes, elastic. Chach! And he told, oh, I see here dislocations, yes. Now, if I am a beginner in this subject, so I would believe it. But he has plenty of dislocations. Another thing is that you cannot stop this, this, this kind of experiment when you want, want, for instance, on this level. So I, I suspected that they took really this structure, this gallium arsenide, and they have got this picture, oh, here, here, exactly, yes? And they show, oh, very beautiful picture with very high high load. But what's happened here is not so it's not so easy to, to know. So what we have done? We make simulation. We scale down the the uh, the uh, experiment. So you see that our cluster is only 300 angstrom, 300 angstrom, 158, which takes, which uh, contains 700,000 atoms. We use terms of type potential, and we indented diamond indenter, hoping to know what's happening if such, if such needle is just penetrating the surface of the gallium arsenide semiconductor. And you, you know, but we haven't simulated really what, what we are e experimentally uh, doing. Yes, it, it is going like this, like this. We have done something different, as physicists, physicists are doing. So the total potential energy during such contact, how does it change? And can you imagine? We have got here parabolic behavior and here linear. But energy, if I take derivative of energy, it is, it is load. So Leibner has got this data, experimenta, load versus depth. If I take derivatives, I also get this load versus depth. And we have received pop-in. So pop-in. We have received, but here is involved only potential, nothing else. But please understand that we, we make computer experiment, yes? So in computer experiment, every position of atom is possible to, to detect. So we, we have tried to de detect dislocation, no dislocation at all. So analyzing this structure and the changes, we came to conclusion that the original zinc blend structure under pressure in nanovolume, nanoscale, changed to completely different structure, rock salt structure, which is conducting. So we change semiconductor to conductor by pressure, but by pressure in nanoscale. The 
pressure is very high, between 16 and 25, 25 uh, gigapascals. So it is major shift and major discovery that plasticity understood so far as dislocation movement and in nanoscale as dislocation generation can be associated with phase transformation. And you know what? We send it to nature, but nature answered us, thank you very much for your interest in our beautiful journal. But we don't believe that you can calculate and so on and so on. So we published in Physical Review Letters and we started to think how to do it, how to prove. And it is not easy because if you have transformation in fraction of cubic nanometer, you cannot make diffraction. You cannot get this information. And that time, interesting interesting things happened. It was prototype of Heizotron. They have done in situ electrical measurement. How to do it? You need this needle very hard. So it is made from diamond. Diamond is hardest. So this diamond has been pushed onto sample, but diamond was heavily boron doped. So by this action, it became metallic and I can measure really what is happening. And it was really a surprise. Look what's happened. If you have contact of semiconductor and metal, you have diode. So current will not go. But if you push it strong, you have metallization. So it is leaking. But suddenly, what was happened? If you push little, it is leaking. So it is current. If you push more, it is healing. It's again perfect Schottky barrier. We couldn't believe. So, and we found that it is exactly at the moment of popping. And we called this current spike. I was working with, with ion beams, so, so there are thermal spikes. So this is very funny. When the metallic phase appears, it is healing contact. We have perfect Schottky contact and no current. And we, so the new phenomenon is looking like this. You see, originally you push nothing. It is short key contact. You deform more elastically. Yes, it is leaking. The, yes, the current is going. And now, boom, you have this popping, appearing new face, but you have no. No current, no carriers. And the answer comes from uh, up initial calculations that I, yeah, the, from in, so we found that the junction between this original singular structure and rock salt structure is making just short key barrier. So, if you push and create this metal, between metal and semiconductor, Schottky barrier is re-established and you get, you get again Schottky barrier, which shows that definitely you have no, uh, that, that this new face appeared. Yeah, another our, another our discovery also published in Nature in 2011, it was, uh, is challenging uh, well-known size effect. So people usually understand that size effect is, is something, uh, something well-known, but we found that this uh, series of popping appears, depends on this, whether the nanovolume is in confined or deconfined state. It means whether it is surrounded by another atoms. And, but I have no time to discuss about this, but I want to tell you the secret of our success and this, uh, and, and this, uh, this group. So the secret of our success lies in this, that every our room here is equipped with sofa. 
And uh, so, for instance, if you would like to, uh, uh, to make this, uh, this great discovery, it is very Japanese style, I, I acquired this. So the researcher is sitting here and calculating, you know, and he doesn't need to go, you know, to discuss with his wife or something like this. Or go. He is just going to suffer for one hour, getting back, calculating, getting, getting back, and this is the main secret of our success. <laughs> the another is having these guys from Japan. Also here, the fatal attraction to a new discovery, and this is made by one of our artists. It is really Fujikale, or it is him, as you can see. And we continue, whether it is on Japanese Sea, or it is on Baltic Sea, as you can see, we stay along this course, and uh, this is Domo Arigato Gozaimashita, so it is the thank you very much that you have been so kind as to listen to me, and I apologize that I took your time. <laughs> <laughs>